Hey there, welcome to this video on solving exponential models in context. This is Accelerated Math 3, and we're going to look at some context problems um, that involve exponential models, and we're going to go ahead and uh, answer some questions about them contextually, as well as identify what is the growth rate or the decay rate. How is this uh, model being changed exponentially? Let's go ahead and take a look. Just some prior knowledge, here this problem says the number of bacteria in a petri dish can be modeled by the function b of t, where t is in hours, and they say how many bacteria will there be when t is equal to two-thirds? Okay, pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go ahead and evaluate b of two-thirds. You're going to evaluate or plug in two-thirds um, for t, so a power of two-thirds. Now in order to evaluate this, we just want to go ahead and rewrite this. This is the cubic root of 8 squared, right? So this is 50. Cubic root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So that is 50 times 4, which is 200. And remember, we're going to be dealing with context problems. So whenever you're answered a question in context, you need to go ahead and answer it in context. So we could say... Um, in two-thirds hour, hours, there will be 200 bacteria, 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 I'm not sure, I need to ask Mr. Drads about that. Okay. Hey, um, let's go ahead and look at a basic form for exponential growth and exponential decay. Exponential growth, now you know that and in order to be an exponential growth, the base has to be bigger than 1. So it would make sense here that our base for this model is 1 plus r. If I have growth, it's 1 plus r. That is the what we are going to call the exponential growth factor exponential growth factor okay that's our base where r is the specific growth rate okay now if i have exponential decay that meaning my base is between zero and one then we can say that the um the base model is modeled by one minus r where again one minus r is our our base and what we call a decay factor where r is the decay rate. And I'll go ahead and um, show you an example of this here in a moment, okay? But again, remember growth, 1 plus r. It's 1 plus that rate, right? That rate that's making it grow. If it's exponential decay, 1 minus r, where r is that, that rate where we're decreasing every single time, okay? So remember that. Growth, 1 plus r. Decay, 1 minus r. Say it with me. Growth, 1 plus r. Decay, 1 minus r. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and um, kind of look how we're going to apply this. So how do we find the growth or decay rate of an exponential function? Well, if you have a growth model, again, 1 plus r is your, your base value. So what you're going to want to go ahead and do is you're going to set 1 plus r equal to the base value of the function model, and then you solve for r. Lastly, rewrite it as a percentage. And when they say this, we're just going to multiply by 100, multiply by 100. For a decay model, it's the same exact idea, um, but this time you set 1 minus r equal to the base value of the function, and then you solve for r. So uh, very, very similar. And then lastly, again, we have to rewrite as a percentage, and what they mean is multiply by 100. Okay. So just checking for understanding, in an exponential growth model, 1 plus r, is it greater than or less than 1? Well, that's going to be greater than 1, okay? The base needs to be greater than 1. In an exponential decay model, 1 minus r is going to be less than 1, less than 1, right? It's exponential decay. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um, apply this. They say determine the growth or decay rate of each function and what it represents in context. So here we have a population of an island over a period of time. Okay, so we're talking about the population of an island 
over a period of time is modeled by the function f of t equals 20,000 times 1.15 to the power of t, where t is in years. At what rate is the island population increasing or decreasing? Well, again, I know that this is exponential growth. And again, how do I know that this is exponential growth? Well, because of the base. The base is 1.15. Now, that's bigger than 1. That's bigger than 1, exponential growth. So since it's exponential growth, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take 1 plus r, and I'm going to set it equal to that base, 1.15. Now I want to go ahead and I want to solve for r. So I'm going to subtract 1 on each side, and we get r is equal to 0 0.15. Okay, that is my growth rate. This is the growth rate. Okay, but now we have to go ahead and we want to rewrite it as a percentage. So we'll multiply by 100, just means that you move this decimal place two places to the right. So we have 15% is the growth rate, 15%. Okay, now we want to answer their question in context. At what rate is the island population increasing or decreasing? So we can say the island population is increasing 15% each year, okay? It's in context. We know what we're talking about, and I use the units that they measured. Let's go ahead and look at a second example. Oh, great. I feel like this is going to apply to me. Upon reaching a certain age, a human's hearing can be modeled by the function, so we're talking about human's hearing can be modeled by the function f of t equals 5,000 times 0.991 to the power of t, where t is in years. At what rate is the human's hearing ability increasing or decreasing? So if you think about this one, um, I don't think it's any surprise that this is exponential decay, exponential decay, because as people get older, they lose their hearing. Huh? Huh? Can you say that a little bit louder? Huh? Exponential decay. Now, that is because our base, again, I mean, just not even thinking about it in context, just looking at it mathematically, 0.991, right? And that is less than one or between zero and one. So I know that this is exponential decay, okay? I want to go ahead and set 1 minus r equal to 0 0.991. 1 minus r is exponential decay. So now I need to go ahead and I need to solve for this. So I'm going to add r to this side. Add r. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 0.991 from this side. Subtract 0 0.991. And so what we get is 1 minus 0 0.991 is going to be equal to r, which means that 0 0.009 is equal to r. Okay, so this needs to be converted to a percentage. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 100, and we get our percentage. Again, when you multiply by 100, you just move it move the decimal how many ever places, how many ever zeros you're multiplying by, you move the decimal that many places. So the growth rate is 0.9%, not even 1%, 1%. This is your decay rate, decay rate. All right, so what does that mean? It means, um, did they say like on average? Um, we can just say the human's hearing is decreasing about 0.9% per year. Okay, and that's all it is. 
Again, if we're talking about what a, a growth rate or a decay rate is, identify the base, set it equal to one plus R or one minus R, solve for R. And here's the good news. Doesn't even matter if you mess up and you use one plus R or one minus R, just take the absolute value. You're never going to have a negative uh, value in here. Okay. So um, one plus R for growth, one minus R for decay. Here's some practice problems. Please go ahead. I want you to try both of these. Pause the video. Don't forget to write a question in context, in context. So what does it represent? What does the rate represent in context? Give it a go. Pause it. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. Here is the solution. So the population of black spider monkeys that's currently vulnerable, that is an exponential decay model. Your base is 0.915. So you set that equal to one minus R and you get a rate of 8.5%. So the populations, uh, the monkeys population is decaying 8.5% per year. No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Um, the next one. During the exponential phase of E. coli bacteria, culture is modeled by the function f of t equals 34,000 times 1.25. Well, that E. coli is definitely growing. It has a base that's 1.25. That's exponential growth. So I have to take that 1 plus uh, r, set it equal to 1.25, solve, and you get 25%. The bacteria is growing 25% per hour. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and um, given some context, we're going to construct an exponential model and then answer a question about it. Very, very straightforward. Okay. Um, all that you have to remember is that an exponential growth model is one plus R. That's the base. Exponential decay, one minus R. Let's go ahead and look at an example. Tony purchased a rare guitar in 2012 for $12,000. Experts estimate that its value will increase by 14% per year. And they want you to write a function to model the growth in value of the guitar T years after it was purchased. So the general formula or general function model is F of T is equal to A times, so this is for growth, 1 plus R raised to the power of T. Growth. This is clearly growth because his value of his guitar is increasing. So I just need to identify, okay, what's A? Well, A is the value that you always start out with or the initial value. And in this case, Tony purchased that guitar for $12,000. The rate, at what rate is this increasing or is it decreasing? Well, in this case, it is 14%. 14%. So I want to go ahead and convert that to a decimal. So I'll divide by 100, divide by 100. Again, just move the decimal two places the other direction, 0.14. Okay, so what would this function model be? Well, I'm going to go ahead and just plug these things in. A is $12,000. R is 0.14. So I'm going to go ahead, plug it in. F of T is equal to 12000 times 1 plus 0.14, so 1.14 t. And there is your function. Don't leave the base as 1 plus 0.14. Go ahead and add. Part B. Estimate how much the guitar will be worth in 2021. OK. Hmm. Oh, I see what they're doing here. They're, they're laying a trap. It's a trap says Admiral Akbar. Okay, well, in 2021, that's this year, in 2021, uh, that's not T. You have to take into account that, that the variable is, is yearly, it's time passing. So 2021, how much time has passed? Well, Tony purchased it in 2012. 2012. So that is... Nine years, nine years, wow. Nine years, T is equal to nine. Okay, so what we wanna do is we just wanna go ahead and evaluate what is F of nine. So that's 12,000 times 1.14 to the power of nine. 
Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up, well, Desmos. All right, so you can see here, I brought up Desmos. I entered that function 12,000 times 1.14 to the power of nine. And that is approximately $39,023.38. So there you have it. That's how much Tony's guitar will be worth in 2021. So in 2021, the guitar will be worth $39,023.38. Man, where can I buy that guitar? That's some pretty good interest rate. 14%, heck yeah. Okay, let's go ahead um, and look at a, a graphical question. So here's a graph of, of the value of Tony's guitar and they say, when will it be worth $45,000? Well, you can see the axis on the uh, y-axis is the value of the guitar. So all we have to do is find, okay, where's 45,000? Well, here's 40, here's 50. So 45 is going to be right in between. So I just need to go ahead and follow this. And it looks like right here. Okay, so that is right here, which if we come down is about 10.2. If you said 10, I think that would be fine. So we could say, um, we could say Tony's guitar. will be worth $45,000 in about 20, remember he bought it in 2012, so in about 2022. Oh wait, Tony's guitar will be worth 45,000 dollars in I'm going to say the year 2022. Next year Tony pretty straightforward, right? All right, now let's look at a depreciation model. Um isn't it nice to buy new things? Like, man, don't you want to go out and just buy a brand new car? You just got your license, buy a brand new car. You don't because the value of that car depreciates. Falls like a rock as soon as you drive, drive off the market. So let's go ahead and, and look at a depreciation model or exponential decay. Here it says the value of a truck purchased new for $28,000 depreciates. Uh-oh, I'm going to put this in red. Depreciates 9.5% each year. Write a function model to uh, model the value of the truck where T is in years. Okay. So again, exponential decay, that's F of T is equal to A times 1 minus R. This time we're going to subtract R. Again, this is exponential decay here. All right. So I know, again, A is how much something start out starts out at. Okay. $28,000. Here's the guitar or not the guitar, the truck, and the rate is 9.5%. Um, and if I go ahead and, and move the decimal, 0 0.095, right? We just divided by 100, if you were curious. Okay, so f of t, f of t is equal to 28,000 times 1 minus... 0 0.095 to the power of t. Okay, and if we go ahead and simplify, that's going to be 0 0.915. To the power of t. I think that's right. Is that right? No, 905. 
905 Schwarberg. Okay, so there is my, my function, f of t. Okay, again, always simplify. Always do this subtraction. Don't just leave it there. All right. Next, they say, how much will the truck be worth 12 years after purchase? Okay, so what is f of 12? So all we do is just plug 12 into our model. And voila. It will tell us. So here we go. Let me go ahead and bring back over my calculator. So we have 28,000 times 0 0.905 raised to the power of 12 years. And that's how much it's worth in 12 years. $8,451.64. Okay. So in 12 years, the truck will only be worth Eight thousand dollars, eight and a half thousand dollars, I would say. Even less if it has a lot of mileage on it. All right. Okay, I have some practice for. Oh wait, actually no. Before we get there, another graph. Uh, use the graph to estimate when the truck will be worth fifteen thousand dollars. So again, here is fifteen thousand dollars, and I want to go ahead. straight down so right there what is that that would be about six six point two years six point three years so we could say the truck will be worth fifteen thousand dollars in about 6.3 years, 6.2, six-ish years. Okay, uh, you're fine as long as you hit the ballpark. Just don't go to another planet. Like if you said in 20 years, well, 20 is clearly wrong. Uh, even anything maybe past eight years would be wrong there. Okay, oh, hold on. Let me make sure I have the right problem up. All right, go ahead, pause the video. Give this one a go. Please construct the exponential model for John's baseball card and how much it'll be worth in 40 years. All right, hopefully you pause the, the video. Here is the solution. So since his uh, baseball card increases in values 11%, it's going to be 3.25 times 1.11 to the power of T. And in 40 years, the card will be worth $211.25. Not as good of a deal, right, as that guitar purchased for a higher value, right, which had a higher, um, you know, growth rate too. Okay, here is another problem. Use the graph to estimate how long it'll take for the card to be worth $7,000. Pause the video. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. Here is the solution. It'll be worth $7,000 in about 73 and a half years. Save it. Give it to your grandkid. Uh, John, was his name John? John? Yep. Grandkid will appreciate that baseball card. All right. Here is another um, example, just in time for tax season. On federal income tax returns, self-employed people can depreciate value of business equipment. Suppose a computer valued at... $2,765 depreciates at a rate of 30% per year. What's that model? Go ahead, generate that model and estimate the value of that computer in five years. All right, hopefully you pause the video. Here is the model and its value in five years. So since it's depreciating 30% per year, that base is going to be 0 0.7, 0 0.7. It only retains 70% of its value each year. And in five years, that computer will be worth $464.71. $464.71 in five years. 
And last but not least, here is a graph problem. When will that computer be worth $200? Seven point three years. All right. Closure. How do I know if something's exponential growth or exponential decay? Well, you should be able to tell in two ways: one, looking at it graphically, and one, looking at it uh, in its algebraic um, representation or its symbolic representation, or in a function. So, on the left, is this exponential growth or decay? Well. I know that that is exponential decay. That function is falling. Exponential growth or decay on the right? Well, I know that this is exponential growth because this base is bigger than one. The base is bigger than one. That's exponential growth. All right, hey, that's going to do it for this lesson. I uh, hope you learned something. hope you learned how exponential models, growth and decay, um, are represented in situations around us all the time. Catch you next time. Peace out.